流れ果てない旅に出て。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jocular Spectacular, <laughs> where we jocularly talk about spectacular things. I'm Walter Mellon. We got. Who am I going by today? I guess I'm going by Two Meg. Two Meg. We got Two Meg. And the spectacular thing we're talking about today fighting games. We love fighting. Yes. In games. Do. Sometimes in real life. You want that MMA at all? You're yes. a sports guy. Yeah, I dude. am. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm still a bummed about Khabib. Yeah. Retiring. Because I just got into MMA last year. He was a year guy. Yeah. yeah and not, like, but, like, when I saw Anderson Silva mm-hmm. and Adesanya fight, which was awesome, I'm like, oh, I wish I could have seen Silva in his prime. But now I get to see Adesanya in his prime, which is super cool. Dude, yeah. But then Khabib leaving, he's... At the top of his game. He's yeah. in his prime, and then he's leaving, so it's a bummer. Yeah, and the bummer about him retiring is only because his dad passed away, and that was yeah. his coach. And, and his mom was like, can you please stop yeah. now? I don't know. That's the only but that's, So you know he's probably not coming back, because they're really honorable. Because he, Yeah, he's, he's a big family yeah, guy. Yeah, big family guy. He's, not Peter. His, two thi- his three things. But I think why he has a lot of appeal internationally, because he's mm-hmm. hard into like three core values a lot of people have. He's... God, family, country. Right. And he's all about those three things. Exactly. And that translates everywhere. But, yes. Uh, Everybody can respect that, even though they don't have necessarily have the same country or yeah. the same Everybody loves God. their God, their family, and country. Right. Everybody can respect that if they are a sensible human being. Yeah, it's... Yeah. And he seems just like such a nice guy. Yeah, he seems like a, a cool tree. dude. Just don't, don't attack... Don't do a Connor, though. Don't attack his God, family, or country, though. Yeah, Connor. <laughs> But yeah, like, <laughs> but we're talking about fighting games today. But that, that's one of the things that helped me get into MMA mm-hmm. is because similar concepts watching, I've been watching fighting games for years, and mm-hmm. it's the same concepts in real fighting of like, oh, spacing, uh, trying to keep the fight to your rhythm, trying yep. to keep them at your distance, and those same principles of watching fighting games. Have you ever the played? The Yomi of it. <laughs> Have you ever played and UFC the 3? No. Oh man, if you love, if you're into UFC now and you're also into fighting games, that's actually the best. That's harmony right there. Okay, I but, actually yeah. really like the UFC series. It's so fun. I don't like the like. It, they seem to like it, when you see the button layouts. They have like two full pages yes. of like. Okay, these are the instructions for the gr- for the standing game. Mm-hmm. You are using all eight buttons. Yes, and and the sticks. And then on the ground game, it's you have a completely terrifying. different It is definitely and, terrifying yeah. when you first look at all that stuff. But if you do it like how you do any fighting game, it's like, let's just play yeah. around, let's lab it a little bit. You'll get into it, and then from there, you can be like, okay, what kind of fighter do I want to be? Do you want to be a grappler? Mm-hmm. Do you want to be a striker? Do you want to be a submission artist? And then from there, you can master that. It's literally... Like the UFC, where you have your specialist yeah. thing that you learn first, and then you can uh, branch out from there. So, like for when I started playing UFC three, I started off as like a striker because like that was my thing. I did taekwondo growing up, so mm. uh, so striking, that's more specifically kicking, was my thing. And then from there, I went into uh, Muay Thai so I can get grappling a little better. And so that's yeah, where I'm they at. They don't right have now. a lot of grappling though. A lot of it's just like the clutch and just ah, throwing yeah. knees. But that that was my best segue into getting to the ground because since you're able to grapple from that and knee mm-hmm. in the game, since you you can knock them down, push them down, and then that's when you can get into the wrestling stuff yeah. from there. So it's like a perfect way for the kicking specialist to get start getting into wrestling from like that weird segue from to taekwondo in my case to to muay thai to wrestling so yeah. it's it's really cool but uh yeah i i get what you're saying when you first see it it's daunting it's like oh my yeah. god you're gonna have to learn all that to really understand no what you need to understand that first time around is uh how to def- defend defend so yeah. <laughs> people who know how to play you can at least dodge from them and then like i was saying learn what you want your specialty to be and once you learn from that what you were saying was after that spacing strats add all that and yeah then, but yeah, yeah so. the, like the, those are the fundamentals of combat sports and fighting games just yeah. spacing pacing and specialization because the right. the it's, 
the matchup. It's all about the matchup of like the the styles make the match. Like you right. have, like in fighting games and sports. Mm-hmm. If you ever, if you like, you know, watching combat sports, you could definitely get into you make that transition from combat sports to fighting games and vice versa because mm-hmm. watching them is very similar. Like they have that similar mindset going yes. into it, that knowledge. Yes, it's comparable. It's not one to one, of course, but no, it's not. But you know, close enough. Khabib's Okazemi is strong, man. He's got that yes. Oki. Once yes. you're on the ground, <laughs> you're not getting back. You up. are definitely He's not. putting that pressure on. And him. the thing about Khabib that I never got, and I'm not going to make it into a UFC uh, podcast, even though I easily could. Oh it's so yeah, good. this has been for five minutes been <laughs> straight UFC talk. Hey, but, We've hey, only talked about the UFC. genre is fighting, the, so let's yeah, take, genre, we're be talking about the game because it's it, a big it's genre though. One. Because yeah. there's so many different types of fighting games. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Smash Brothers isn't a fighting game, so we're not going to talk about oh, that. We will totally but talk so, about that because there's so there's many an options of making a fighting game. But it's not designed to. All right, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll, we'll finish this but, UFC talk. But first. anyway, the thing about Khabib that I love about his grappling game, he uses his legs. And it bothers me how many people don't use their legs in their grappling game. If you ever watch him, do you ever notice how he uses his legs a lot in his yeah. grapple? He uses he all of his body to just control. Right. But when people usually wrestle, they usually mostly use their arms. It's very arm-based. But with him, when he gets you down, it's arm-based. And like you say, he uses all his body. But since he's so leg-strong, he will wrap around your legs, too. One leg could take both of yours out, at least make it real hard. And since he's doing all that with his legs... That's all that energy you have to take out. And he's a magician already, at what he does. Man. Yeah. Like, he's the he's the messy of fighting. <laughs> Speaking of magicians. But, um, but yeah, man. Khabib, wish him all the luck. Uh, wish his family the best. Um, hopefully, his mom will let him come out and play yeah, in the year hopefully. 2022. And hopefully, uh, you know, things get better for guys like Punk. And they get live tournaments and they don't have to deal with uh having tantrums over netcode <laughs> he was a salty boy yeah he was what salty, he was suspended salty, uh yeah what he he was i don't know why he was mad at his opponent that uh, if anything be mad at capcom for having that crappy connection yeah that crappy non ggpo I don't so, know why they're not using it. It's free now. It's free. Yeah, th- to set up for you. Uh, yeah. For whoever's watching this and you're not into fighting games, because maybe the Baller well, Talk will get you into fighting games. Yeah, hopefully. So because of COVID-19 restrictions, every tournament this year has been online. Mm-hmm. And not all netcode is created equal. No, especially the ones that come from the land of the rising sun. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, the place that makes the fighting games I like generally have the worst net code yes. i also like them too i'm not gonna lie I, yeah. I prefer uh japanese fighting games mostly yeah like i prefer St- street fighter street over fighter. mk that's mk there's that's MK. like the classic one ki has amazing net code yeah. i hear mk has yes net code. oh my god ki's net code. i don't like ki or i MK have gotten though. into it that's the reason i have that uh that i'm, I'm not an nrs pad. guy this is why i have this controller is because of ki because it's just so much easier to oh combo combo and then i just adapted to uh using my fighting stick with yeah. it and i was like oh yeah well i know people who will use this so that's good i didn't the just reason waste money. yeah the reason i have i have that same controller uh the reason is because i i prim- on my I play on pc i have a third party controller that has the uh ps4 setup it has like mm-hmm. a nice dual shock feel to it with the sticks mm-hmm but the D-pad on this third-party controller is trash, so I pretty much had to get a controller with a better D-pad. Of course, if you're going to be a pad fighter, yeah, it's all about motions with that pad or the D- I that D-pad. I sometimes play with keyboard if I like... <gasps> if I'm playing a charge character, you you have the numpad no, as the six a, buttons no, and I then the keys... Well, they have that. What's that controller hitbox. Daigo use? The hitbox. Yeah. Whereas that's similar. Even principle. though I gasped, that's what a hitbox is. It's, Essentially, yeah. yeah. Do watching uh, Tekken players, Korean Tekken players, yeah. use that thing? They're like, do they love it? Do see them hit the buttons like because uh, there's the hitboxes with the um, 
like a Wazda setup, mm-hmm. and then there's the one with the uh, actual like Sanwa buttons, and seeing them use the the Wazda setup with that is insane. I'm like, let me try using that. Then I'm like, no, that's too much money. And I yeah. did, I didn't grow up playing on PC. Like I could learn to adapt, like I did my fighting stick, but I, I'm cool with the fighting stick right now. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of fighting sticks, so Dago, Dago's getting old. Maybe it's better on his joints for the, to have the hitbox. <laughs> I added. Do you notice what I added to my fighting stick, sir? Get a. Is that a different stick? You talking about this? Yeah. Yes. Because did, did you used to have a ball top? Yes. See, that's, that's one of the cool things about having a fight stick is the customizability. It's like PC gaming. You could tweak the case. You could tweak the hardware inside. You had like a weird gate, though, I remember. Yeah, I have a eight gate. Eight gate. That's, yeah. yeah. That's for Shoto plebs. You could customize so, the gate. You could have yeah. a square gate or like a diamond gate, but this is a eight gate. Yes. Different, different, it creates a different feel when uh, doing inputs, which... You know, the customizability of how you play it. Yeah, doing quarter circles. You definitely know when you're doing it. You get the three clicks and then let it loose. But yeah, I had to get the ball top because I'm like, I'm American. This is what I grew up with. grew up with in the arcades, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I don't know why I was using a ball top. Because I was trying to find a way to, like, dash. I could never dash going away. With the grip on the ball. Yeah, like, I I could never do that. Because I'm like, that's so Because it's like you got that thin stick and then you got to grip the ball. Yeah, Yeah. like, they would show you the ways. Like, I would look up, like, the ways to hold the ball top. They would have the wine glass way Mm -hmm. where you have it underhand like this. That's, yeah. Or it was the... Like like a claw almost, but that wasn't enough grip. It was kind of weird feeling. Or the way I was doing it was the American ball top way, but with the ball. Yeah. But it was feeling weird. And then just one day, I realized, oh, well, I have a ball top laying around for like a, a Pac-Man version I had. Mm-hmm. So let me trade it out just to see how it feels. It feels it, better. Yeah, because yeah. I can actually do this. And the reason I did this when we were playing uh, mm-hmm. Guilty Gear. <laughs> I, it was making me frustrated. I couldn't dash backwards. <laughs> like it was like because you would be running a, away yeah. from me. I couldn't just come back. Yeah, because you can go that way because that's where your hand naturally is. Right. But then going the other way. But yeah, going the other way with the ball top was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Or I would have to put my right hand <laughs> into it for a moment. It was like a game of trade off. Yeah. So I was like, let me do a ball top, and I can like grip it, and then do. You know, like when you're yeah, on the exactly, arcade, or you, exactly. you know, or when you're at home with some lotion. But that, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> both hands. But, but yeah, that, that's what's cool about the fight stick, or you, you could customize exactly how right. the feel of your play. But yes, yeah, it fight people problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But yeah, how did you get into fighting games? Because uh, I know this is like I'm I'm way more casual than you. I like fighting games. I watch them more than I play, just because I love playing other types of games mm-hmm. more so i and it definitely takes time to get good at fighting games yes it definitely it's, does it's about that we could get into the weeds later of like the mentality you have to have to get into fighting games but yeah yes. what started you on fighting games oh that's a great question you're good at this oh thank you <laughs> i would say the thing that got me into fighting games was uh, probably my dad uh, he got me into fighting games probably in uh, the first game we played was super nintendo uh, we played a uh, Street Fighter 2. That's the classic. Yes, man. that's what we played. That was like the first game me and him played together. That would have to have been, I was probably like five, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe four, because I don't think my sister was alive yet. My younger sister. Uh, I think, or she was like a baby. So, right, so like early age, like kindergarten. Yeah. I was able to play. I was able to kind of do inputs. Not great, though. Yeah. <laughs> But I was able to play and be a little competitive, but I wasn't that good yet. And uh, when we would play, I remember this specifically, uh, I would always say my dad looked like DJ. I was like, Dad, that looks like you. And you've seen DJ. He's a Jamaican. Yeah. Uh, dark hair, uh, dark skin guy. He had pants with his name on. <laughs> right. Maximum. <laughs> uh, and then uh, he would have the ponytails with like the flat top. My dad did not look like that. <laughs> my my uh, dad was 6'2". At the time, he was like 280. Uh, 
maybe, white skin. Maybe glasses. had a flat top in the eighties, man. That was all the kid and play. It was all the rave, man. <laughs> got the giant flat top. Right. I like got it. Got that uh, Paul Phoenix haircut. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I like you like nothing like DJ during that part. But I just saw a black man. And was like that's dad. Yeah. <laughs> so See, yeah, that's one of the coolest things about. Uh, fighting games and the fgc in general the fighting game community Mm -hmm. is how diverse it is like the fighting game rosters have been diverse from the start with uh even going back to street fighter one fighting street uh (laughs) on turbo (laughs) graphics cd by now street fighter two having that diverse roster and also it has the most diverse community i i, feel. I 100 000% agree with you because you see I the always point top that guys you got a good mix of i don't know you just uh you got some prs there you got some b's you got some j's you got some k's you got some, you got other some B's, BJ's. more p's because <laughs> like you got what, some f's what other scene preferred? are you seeing like top tier pakistani guys other than like the fighting game community man that is true. Name one. We got Arslan Ash. Name one other pro Pakistani player I'm, that's not another Tekken player. Right. I'm trying to think. Like maybe League of Legends. Maybe uh, Dar Darshan. I think Darshan. Yeah, I think. Don't be quoting me on this. Yeah. But I think that, and he may not be Pakistani. I just know he's a brown guy. He's brown guy. Brown guys. Brown guy. But, but, yeah, because uh, that's. I mean, that's it. That's the only one I could even kind of think of, but you're right, though. Because, like, I, I didn't... Representation matters. Like, as two yes. non-white guys yes, who, who Two grew people up, of color. Two p- POCs. Yeah. You down with AOC? You know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AOC 2024? Oh, no. Okay, 2032. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like... You don't think about it right until like you have to think you, you do think about it right because right, right. it, but it's just something so inherent which is kind of why i i get why a lot of uh those boogaloo boys or those crackers are upset <laughs> like why aren't the uh, mm, white men we right. need more white where's my white men like no there's still a ton <laughs> still a way a ton but like I don't know, well, growing up where I didn't think about it, but I did gravitate towards, like, Mad TV right. watching Bobby Lee. Like, oh, an Asian guy. Cool. He's funny. I, I guess see, like, another Asian guy on TV, because, like, growing up in the white middle class, in uh, the white northwest suburbs of Chicago, it's like, nah. Yeah, you... Like, you... Uh, like, you... You know you're not like everybody else, and they don't make you. F- <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. They, and, they, and they make you and feel that, like you're not like yeah. everybody else. I, yeah. Yeah, I can only imagine how cruel the suburbs were. Yeah, it was okay. Because, you know, I'm not that dark. <laughs> yeah. Right, just imagine if you were, like, my color. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be... And I'm not that dark! Yeah, exactly. Because, like, <laughs> there were fobbier people, so it's... I don't know, you, you get shit, and then... Because i more Americanized than some other people. Right. And then you divert things, and then you become a piece of shit and kind of bully the people who oh, are no. more different. I, it's it's sad, but that, that's, yeah, I, that's I how you are. That's that. how it is as a kid of just like survival uh, of the fittest. These, these people are shitting on me, and then someone weirder <laughs> <laughs> gotta like, send it to them. By weirder, I mean they have a darker skin color, and their parents are more fobby than you. Oh, no. So then you make fun of them, and then you're not being made fun of i mean that's i'm not a, i'm not proud of that <laughs> i'm not i'm uh, you know it's it's a shameful thing that right, that's yeah. how being a kid was in those circumstances yeah. but you know but you know you had to do what you had to, you had to, do, to do, do not be yeah. destroyed and buried every day but that's but coming back but that's also the just, point of the diversity yeah. in fighting games. He's also just being a kid in the ni- the nineties was way different than <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was not just like oh you know I was just meaner in the nineties. Dude, the two thousands were like that too. Yeah, but it was more fun. You <laughs> you're calling people F's and <laughs> G's all, all over the place. Dude, that just stopped like two three years ago. I, I feel, dude, when I was growing up, we were still doing F's and G's. I know it's that was two thousand twelve. <laughs> 
<laughs> we were still doing but that. But yeah, that, that's what I love. I mean, you have... I should have had that biscuits hit me. Like, oh, maybe I'm a little hungry. <laughs> I think we should have more biscuit down. But that's like that's after. beside the point. Oh, we're gonna have hot dogs too. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. There's so much diversity in fighting games. Not not just in like the uh, cultural backgrounds, the color of the skin, but also diversity in play style. Yes. There's you have 3D fighting games like uh, Tekken, Soul Calibur, and even like. The UFC fighting games, but even then, in like pev- the three D fighting games, there's a lot of diversity there. Where you have games that take advantage of the three D plane more. Where yes. if you want something that's a little more traditional to the two D style, Tekken has that. But then you have a li- little bit of sidestepping, and then Soul Calibur has even more sidestepping and yeah. takes. I feel like that's a faster the more game 3D too. Plane. And then you have Dead or Alive that takes. That's even more 3D, more environmental things going on. And then for the traditionalists, you have 2D fighting games. And even then, you have a lot of diversity there. You have your uh, anime fighting games, which are like faster paced, a little wilder in terms of character designs mm-hmm. and play styles. And then you have the old gold standard of Street Fighter, a little more traditional. And then you also have MK, like the... Western developed ones like Nether Realm specifically have a different feel compared to other ones. Yeah, you got them fighting herds. Yeah, them yeah. fighting herds. You got like you say, you got Ki Skullgirls Asterisk uh, right. Asterisk Mike Z. <laughs> Fight uh, Fantasy Strike. Have you played? Fantasy, I have played some Fantasy Strike. Oh man, I, that's the, it's an interesting game. I'm, I like it. Yeah, I, I, we should play. I like the concept of it. I'm not a fan of it though, just because too simple. It has that. It's that nice middle ground of. You have things, you have like concepts like dive kick where mm. it pretty much. In dive Shout kick, out to Keith. dive kick is a two button fighter. You could jump and you could kick, and it boils down the fundamentals of the fighting game, which is right. timing and spacing. You time your attack, you space your attack, and each character has. Trying to download your opponent. Yeah, you have to download your opponents. Yeah, that Yomi, that mental game, yeah. that mental chess of trying to predict what your opponent will do uh, and trying to outgame them. The meta game of fighting games. If just love it so much. It I has, do too, man. Because that again, that same thing of combat sports. Of mm-hmm. here, this is my game plan. This is what I think my opponent's game plan is. I need to try to implement my game plan, and if their game plan counteracts mine in a way, I need to adapt. You have that classic shirt of buff, nerf, adapt, and that's... I love seeing that in a fighting game. Yes. When you see that happen. Just on... Like, in a tournament when you have someone's game plan going wrong, the matchup is going wrong, and then you see them shift their strategy on the fly. Dude. My sister, I know she is so bad. You got this. <laughs> like, how dare Noah? Be quiet. We're trying to do the podcast. Can I be in it? I farted. I hope you smell it. That's mm. <laughs> All right. What well, do you remember? What we were talking about last? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Um, you were giving uh, in depth. About diversity in games. That's no, we I thought we moved on to um, how you got started on games. No, we did that. Weren't we still on that? No. We weren't still on that. <sighs> Dude, how do you not remember even a lick of it? You were you were actually on a good point. And uh, then I was about to reply and then that's when Noah came in. I, I had like, notes. I left my notebook at home. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. We can just continue on from this that. This is why I'm not a broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. No. Um, yeah, we can just. Yeah, very. <laughs> jumping right back into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll just jump. We don't. <laughs> just say welcome back. And welcome then... back. All right. 
Hey guys, we're Welcome back. back. You... Uh, pretty sure we were talking about uh, diversity in games. If you notice, there was a time lapse, and yeah. now the sky is brighter than it was a beautiful, before uh... a second ago. Yeah, we had a beautiful sunset going on. Yes. And now it's uh, setting more than <laughs> we'd like. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just. We were at the part of diversity in fighting games. Yeah, you, you see a... And how a, strategies and dive kick. Yes, are. Um, the fundamentals of it. Okay. Yeah, you remember this. As I get older, my memory oh, is just... Oh, poor guy. You know. <laughs> life is inconsequential, except for the very important moments. Well, see, at least you got the important moments. Exactly. I keep those in here, but uh, conversations, nah. Well, here, here, even better. Well, this is going to be like a, a semi reset. Where did you start with game? Because you already Thank asked. Thank you. Me. I, same as you. Like, uh, was it a brother uh, be, or dad? Or? Uh, cousin's house. Oh, cousin. Okay. Co- you know, the cousin with all the systems. Like uh, he had Mortal Kombat, uh, Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. I think the first one is probably Street Fighter Two, because you know. Because no, I played we're, we're of that really. age where we were alive when Street Fighter Two came out, and that's technically the first the fighting first one game. Yeah, actually played. Yeah, on yeah. purpose. Uh, well, I guess technically Street Fighter One, but it, it wasn't really meant to be a one-on-one fighter. It was just Ryu and Ken being a straight head swap. Yeah, and even a, a, not a good one at that. And it didn't really have competitive built in mind. No, and it's a it's an awful game, people. Is, yes, it's, and I encourage you to play it. That's a game that needs a remaster. That's what they should do. No, that's how you remaster. You should try to remaster games that were bad and fix them, not remaster and you perfect have games. The two buttons and they're touch sensitive, and they broke <laughs> easily. <laughs> yeah, so the original <laughs> Street Fighter, it had a kick button and a punch button. And depending on how hard you pressed it was whether it was a light, medium, or heavy attack. So think and, about it, not to cut you off, but yeah. think about it like how uh, Smash Brothers is with uh, how you have to hit a light or heavy for Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Where if you want to do a light jab in Smash Brothers with Ken, you have to boop, so yeah. just a light flick. Or if you want to do a hard, you hold. So it's that type of like story or background to the punch yes. system in street fighter one but imagine it being on an arcade machine where you have a ton of people smacking buttons yes and then broke up to do a heavy attack i need to hit that button like it those broke and you had to and yeah. if, if i'm it's not before mistaken, our time but I'm, yeah i heard a lot of stories. is that the one is that also you hit the buttons, and you also have to do a special motion to yeah. to get a Hadouken. Oh my yeah. god! Can you imagine? You have to do <gasps> no. <laughs> and yeah, naturally, uh, they made it simpler and just had three buttons. Yeah, for light, medium, smart. and heavy. Yeah. And yeah, it's a it's a solid system. I, I personally, that's the one at Galvin Ghost. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a six buttons is a bit much for me personally for fighting games in general or yeah, that fighting game for fighting games in general I, I, like, really too many buttons too much to keep track of bro that's like have, the perfect amount for you have to have match well so you guess that, guilty gear has five buttons technically with the dust. that's a weird number to me like i have to have an even number it's better than having a dodge button or yeah. not a block button. So God, I hate block button block games. Block button. yeah get the hell out I of here i hate block NRS. button games bro but that's yeah. so trash so, uh, yeah, I played some Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat at a cousin's house, but I really didn't get into it until Tekken 1, where uh, there, was a, there was a sleepover at the Ronkowitz Brothers' place. Shout out to the Ronkowitz Brothers. Hell yeah, I think that's their last name. Again, I haven't seen these people in two decades since <laughs> grade school. Jeez. But yeah, they had a PlayStation and Tekken 1. Or was it? It, might, it was either Tekken one or two, and we played that all night, and that's when I really got into fighting games, and then other sleepovers playing uh again Tekken Toe Ball number one. If you ever played that back in the day, Toe Ball, okay. It, it was a uh, Square Enix's three D fighting game, not Ur Guys. It was one. It came before Ur Guys. Okay. But yeah, that was. Pr- it probably plays like ass now, but of it course. was so beautiful. <laughs> back in the day when you didn't know better 
Oh, those days. Yeah, and then I played a demo of Guilty Gear 1, oh, the and that was... Me and my brother played that de- played the hell out of that demo. I bet. And then, you know, just Tekken being the main thing I played through, like, until college. But the one I really fell in love with, that really had me deep in the genre, was Guilty Gear X X2 Vanilla on PS2. Like, when, when did... Like, we... We know you started with Street Fighter 2, but when did you really love the genre? Oh, that's a great, great question. Again, you're really good at this. Uh... (laughs) You have low standards for what a good question is. (laughs) Hey, that's okay. (laughs) Um, Let's see. So after my dad got me into it, I would say Alpha 3 was a game I played nonstop. Uh, This was me playing... Pretty much by myself at this point. On PS1? Yeah. This was uh, Alpha 3. Uh, I loved it so much in my high school yearbook. Mm-hmm. Go for Broke was my my quote. Was Go for Broke Alpha or I thought that was... Uh... That was in Alpha 3 as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I thought that was Street Fighter 3. No, no, it's in uh, Alpha 3. Alpha Street 3, Street. Oh, okay. Go, Go for Broke! broke. Yeah. Oh man, I love that. I heard that so many times growing up. So this was during the time. I'm not sure if you had this era in your life where you played fighting games by yourself because this is oh. before online. Yeah. Uh, for me, this is before uh, I had friends to come over or anything like that. Yeah. The majority of my fighting game playing was by right. myself. So Alpha Three was that was most, and I didn't have a memory card. <laughs> I didn't oh, have a memory man. card either. So fighting that's probably another reason I love fighting games cuz fighting games you don't need a memory card to really yeah. enjoy them except for the true fighting game Smash Brothers. That's the one fighting game you always need a memory card yeah, in if you want not, the that's characters. A party game. It's been a, it's a <laughs> you're a jerk. Well, it's, it's been a thousand it's times. It's a party game. Uh Leffen isn't uh, doesn't count as a pro fighter cuz he plays primarily Smash. Man is trash. It's been... I'm going to just ignore you. No. Nah. There's been many a times where I played Melee and I had to play <laughs> the first time where you have to play as everybody. Yeah. Or 10 or 15 minutes or whatever and Mewtwo's the first one you get. That that happened to me so many times. And the messed up part about all that is my main character in Melee was Roy. So always... The play only through it to get Roy again. Right. The only time I got to play as Roy consistently is when I played with my uh, my cousin, always cousins. Uh, we would play at my uh, my grandma's house, and he had a memory card. And I was like, okay, well, this is the only time I get to play as Roy or Marth, and I'm still a Fire Emblem kind of main today. But um, get out of here with that Byleth. No, other other than her, him, whatever you want to call. Him her I, zimzer zimzer I, well i don't know I, <laughs> like, I don't i don't know what to call like those characters like yeah, robin I, I never play i didn't play three houses so i don't know how uh i don't know how you played your, your picked, Byleth. uh female i think right on yeah that's the best way to go bro yeah bro yeah bro <laughs> yeah, under boys <laughs> but, but to answer your question i did not forget your question uh, I would say when I got into it seriously, like like playing tournaments, and was like, oh, I gotta really do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably five, ten years ago, and five, ten years after I started playing Street Fighter Alpha Three, this was probably around the Street Fighter Four time. Yeah. Which that's if you've seen anybody talk about these, it's usually, oh, I got back into it, or I got into it for Street Fighter 4. And the reason it's like that is because uh, it's Street Fighter, and that's a huge game for a bunch of people. Also... I didn't even know Street Fighter 3 existed until like four or five, maybe six years ago. Yeah, Street Fighter 3 is. Yeah, that was like... I think that's my favorite still. I I love it now. I like, I love it today, but when it came out, I didn't know about it. Honestly, for most m- people did <laughs> majority of my life, I thought Alpha Three was three because yeah, uh, my parents gave me Alpha Three. I was like, "Oh well, this is." I, they added the Alpha. The three's in there, but the yeah. three's there. I just played two, so Alpha Three is the 
third one in the series. I didn't know about Alpha being its the prequels. I didn't know about that. I didn't know there was an actual Street Fighter three trilogy at a point. I didn't know any about that. I just knew Alpha three. That's why I love playing. Ken's my guy. Let's go. But also, yeah, part of what I think a, a big thing with Street Fighter four blown mm-hmm. up with esports and the FGC is because that Street Fighter four came out at the time when YouTube became a thing, streaming became a thing. Online. And just online online fighting, in general, yeah. just like online communities mm-hmm. beyond 4chan. <laughs> right. You're like, oh, you have a more concentrated place like Reddit, and right. uh, Twitter. It's easier for people to meet up right. online. Right, not so grimy. Hey, yeah. man. I love that comic where Dr. Eggman calls Sonic a double N. <laughs> Why? Good old, good old 4chan people. 4chan, what's wrong with you? Anyway. 100% problematic, but it's still a funny cartoon. It's hilarious, <laughs> but you can't show that to your co workers. I know you can't. It is funny because it's Eggman just said, like, I, like he, he's mad at Sonic. He just can't think of anything. He's like, you, you, uh, double head. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's not cool. It's not cool. You can't do that. Come on. You can't do it. <laughs> but especially yeah. today. Especially today, right. It wasn't okay back then. But it's really not it's okay especially now. Especially not okay now. Right. But uh, yeah, Street Fighter 4 is the I would say the game that got me into like, oh, I can play this with people. Oh, I can play this seriously. Oh. Yeah, same here. It was yeah. Street Fighter 4 for me. Yeah, I remember uh like I in high school, we had a like a gaming club, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a tournament, and I won the tournament, guys. Don't be salty, because I know if my friends see this, they can be like, we didn't have a tournament, or you didn't win the tournament. You know how they are. You know how friends can be when they are haters. Hey, bunch of haters. Bunch of uh, beta cucks. Yeah, beta cucks. We're boys. alphas. Yes, we're chats, bro. Yeah, down yeah. under boys. Yeah, down under boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won a Street Fighter 4 tournament. That was fun. And then um, I would say when I got into it, like the way that you know of me today is probably Street Fighter 5. Because at this point, I am I have the fighting stick under control. Mm-hmm. But Street Fighter 4, <laughs> I'm not sure if I ever told you this story, where um, it was hard for me to put in inputs. Because when I was playing Alpha 3, how I would put in shuris and hadoukens it would be random because i would just roll the 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 d-pad like this <laughs> and hit either light medium or strong and waited for it to come out in the wood yeah and it would be a shuri or a hadouken and be like all right best of luck and then i would have to do that the reverse way to get <laughs> <laughs> a tatsu out yeah. and i was doing that for street fighter 4 and it was annoying and then I played Fei Long, and it was really not working. And so I was like, okay, well, what if I play like a fighting stick or an arcade mm-hmm. stick? Because I was seeing people do that online on YouTube. I did not have money for the arcade stick yet. But <laughs> I was like, well, they're holding it like on the ground and yeah. like on their lap. So I'll hold my con- I'll put my controller on the floor. Oh, here we go. Here's... <laughs> so... On the floor like this, yeah. and then play it like a fighting game. So I would put in inputs like this. I would actually play like this. Wait, can you you, you just hold the controller like this? Yeah, hold no, it like that. I wanted like to do it like a fighting top. stick. I didn't do it like that. I actually, yeah, that's... I did not hold it. I did not claw it. I put it on the floor. That is stupid, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you doing? So yeah, I was like this. But think on the floor, on the floor, hardwood floor, and I was putting inputs in like this. So even when hitting buttons, I would have to do this. Wasn't working out well, obviously. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll have to invest in a fight stick. Didn't know they were so expensive at the time. So yeah. I bought the Mad Cats one, the uh, Street Fighter Four. Yeah, I still actually have it. It's in yeah. that corner. Nice. And then I still have the box. This is like perfect for the show. Well, that's the thing. Like, with I have all the things kind of around. A fight stick, they are expensive, but you could get in getting a cheap one, and then as it goes on, you could upgrade the right. individual parts, get different buttons, get different sticks, different gates. Unless you are playing with cheap mad cats who 
make sure that you can't trade out things. Oh, do that. <laughs> yes. Th- especially this version. Like the tournament edition, they were a little bit more friendly with tournament edition sticks. Tournament edition sticks are like the sticks you could think of today where it's like you unscrew it. Yeah. You can actually take out pieces and all that. Not the arcade fight stick, the uh the it's the smaller version where Yeah. Let's see, is there a picture on here? This. I kind of dig this a smaller form stick. Oh yeah, I like the other that ones too. Are, yeah, I really do like that. The, yeah, it's this version. I still have it. I still have all the pieces. Yeah. Uh, Did you play F, uh, fighting games on a 360 controller? Because this, the 360 controller's D pad is trash. <laughs> Yeah, I, I tried that man. too because uh, when I was playing on the floor before I was playing on the floor, I used the D pad because I was playing on PlayStation on Alpha Three. Yeah, but I played Street Fighter Four on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. So originally I was playing like this, and then I wasn't really digging that. It no, was it, it did not feel like I was rolling it, even it though you can bad. see it rolling. Yeah. But it did not feel this did not feel like that because you don't get that confirmation of. Right, this direction, have, this right. direction, you, you don't, which is why some people have gating preferences for their stick, because right. they can feel exactly. That's why I have an eight gate in mind, yeah. yeah. And you definitely don't have any eight gate feel in this. This just feels like a straight yeah. nub. Yeah, so, that's that's yeah. what I worry about with the uh, Xbox Series controller, because it has a um, kind of. Yeah, like a, like a half pipe, I think of it, yeah. like a skateboard park. Yeah. Like, I, I like the Xbox One controller's D-pad. It's just trying to do motion inputs with your thumb, mm-hmm. like, over this way, rather than, like, naturally where it is. You with, need like, the controller, controller, for example? Yeah. Here you go, like sir. Like, having, having, like, your thumbs are naturally going to fall here, so it's easier to do motions. But, yeah. like, to have that extra extension of your thumb... Or since you're extending it, it's locking up your thumb a bit and just makes doing motions this direction a goddamn, a goddamn pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, I don't know how people do it. They're psychos and or they have, re- they work out their thumb. Yeah, but <laughs> that's yoga. the thing about thumb the, yoga. The, 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 the diversity that you were talking about in the fighting game yeah. community. It not only does it go with the people, the characters, the, the hardware, the hardware, all of it is very diverse yeah. in this community, you which have is what I love. Initial T, who played a Guilty Gear tournament with a racing wheel. Yeah, some it's people pretty, are, uh, yeah. some heroes just don't wear capes. So. Yeah, exactly. That's so true. So yeah, I, this is my first fighting stick that I used. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I wanted to customize it. And they inside of it, it looks like, a, like Jolly Rancher was melted onto the pieces, so you can't take it out. What? Yes. It, people who had this stick and wanted to customize it, they understand what I went through. So they like they fixed the. You could not with... customize this this one. The only customization you can do with this stick was take out the buttons. That's it. That was it. Like it, in that stick right now, it's a bunch of blue buttons because I switched them out mm-hmm. with a more customizable smaller stick. And then I ended up graduating to big boy sticks, uh, probably like. I think when the Street Fighter Five came out, because I was mm. like, I can't be using the small stick anymore. I need, I need that Hori. And see, this is good for the show. This was the first big boy stick I got right here. Oh. Yes. So we. Do you have three fight sticks then? Four. Four. And one is signed by Kenny Omega. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. the one with the. The the Kenny Omega stick that I call it, that one has the buttons of the Street Fighter Four, my original stick. I put those buttons onto the Kenny stick, put the old buttons with the Kenny stick onto the, to the uh, Street Fighter Four stick, and then pretty much was like, okay, uh, I have all the nice stuff with the Kenny stick, and then I left those both alone to get this stick. Nice. The what's this? The rap four? Yeah. Yeah, who's the, the real art uh Hori or Ori. Ori. Yeah. What what do you call it? Ori or Hori? Hori. They're not okay. French. I always call it Ori. Ori. No. I always say Ori. I don't know it's why. Hori. 
Yeah, Hori just sounds rude. Well, you know, you respect women. We get it. Thank you. Ladies. 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 I respect broads. Yeah, I didn't get into watching fight. Well, again, because it wasn't the easiest thing to watch fighting games back, like, pre- youtube and video streaming but yeah street fighter 4 is when i got into watching fighting game tournaments and i still prefer watching street fighter 4 over street fighter 5 why because at this point i'm pro about it like i prefer playing street fighter 5 Mm -hmm. but i I just liked watching street fighter 4 more just because like something about it is uh, what why fighting games are my favorite genre to watch Mm. Is because it's the most clear. It's yes. readable. Because it's there's one guy and another guy, and you could see them doing exactly what they're doing, and you could see exactly who's winning the yeah. match. Versus if you watch a, a MOBA. Oh, God. It's like, or Overwatch. Overwatch. I love playing Overwatch, but Same. it's impossible to watch because you have t- 12 different viewpoints happening. And you're jumping between tel- twelve different things who are doing very different things, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a clusterfuck to watch. Whereas, you know, all I have to say about that, it's like same reason why I like again with fighting games and uh, combat sports. Mm-hmm. You you know who's winning. Yeah, you know who's you winning. You see very clear what's happening. You can that grasp guy's getting onto choked it. Out. Rather than like American football, where it's just like I don't know, it's a bunch of dudes running in one way and. Other guys blocking. Yeah. I don't I, know exactly, like, the nuances of all those dudes doing stuff. I got you. I mean, I, I can't see it. I, I I can't see it from that viewpoint, but I understand Go where Bears. you're coming from. Go Bears, man. Even though their quarterback sucks. When does the quarterback not suck for the Bears? Uh, 1940-something, when Sid Luckman was the quarterback. Or, oh, no, you I gotta give respect one. to Jim McMahon. 1980, like, five. Okay. Or specifically... 1986 or 87 was the last time the Bears had a quarterback that the fans actually liked. It's like so, like two guys in a hundred year span. Correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then for me personally, I love Jay Cutler, but I'm also a, I'm also a Bears fan that was born in the 90s, so I didn't see McMahon or Sid Luckman. So my choices are Rex Grossman, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Brian Greasy and Jay Cutler. And Jay Cutler didn't even make it further than Rex Grossman, technically, to a super dag. Wow. Let's not talk about my depressing bears. No, no, no. Fighting games are something we like. (laughs) And they're usually, they're good. And does not disappoint me. So, because yeah, there's always something to play or watch with fighting right, games. Right. I can always change the channel or change the, I guess, technique channel on Twitch or YouTube. Yeah, third exactly. Channels. Yeah. Technically, you can change the channel to something else or play myself. I can't play outside by myself when it comes to football. I have to suffer watching those stupid Yeah, there's bears. great uh, YouTubers out there, streamers putting out fun, fun game content like Sage Am, mm-hmm. Anime Illuminati, Maximilian Dude, the big one. Oh yeah, the big fellow. Which Max. He, yeah, they're doing Max. they're doing God's work by getting more people into yeah. fighting games. Max is the OG. I respect to love Max the Max. No pun intended. Totally yeah. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but, a, I'm a Majin Obama guy. Obama. I'm a Majin Obama. <laughs> But uh, here's the first stick that I owned. Yeah. It's customized because obviously they even come with blue buttons. Mm-hmm. Hit them buttons. But the, I remember I, us talking. I remember why I ended up changing. Because the, cause I couldn't trade out. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to trade out was fill the stick. Like moving around. You feel how loose it is? I was expect. I was caught off guard because I was expecting some resistance. No. It's that Ooh, loose. Square gate. Yeah. Yeah, even though I can change out the gate in this, doesn't matter if this thing is this loose. Mm. The, the gate isn't the problem with this situation right here. And they won't let you take out the um, the actual stick because everything's taped in or glued in with a Jolly Rancher, as I call <laughs> it. Because it's like a red glue covered in all of the parts in here. And the only things, like I was saying, was these buttons. And then... Can I see it? Kenny stick. 
Did so you get that signed at um, C2E2? C2E2? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's been a little messed up. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, but that's not because of me like rubbing on it. That's just time. No, I think you're rubbing on something the next only, to it and I, getting something. I know it. when I meet Kenny Omega again. I'm going to ask him to just sign it every time I see him. <laughs> hey, you want to sign this again on a different spot? Yeah, just all, he just signs it everywhere, yeah. and then I'll make sure he signs, like, a sheet of paper for me. <laughs> yeah, what, what did you use? Did you use one of those uh, marker, or, like, those paint pens or something no, I else? used, like, the uh, the marker that you autograph stuff with, okay. and he used a silver one, or um, a gold one, so... But people, I took a picture of it before it went out. It faded, yeah. Yeah, and you can still, if you like hold it in a certain reflection, you can see the K and the Omega symbol still. Yeah. So, let me show the people. For those who are wrestling fans and fighting game community fans, which yeah. is a, that's like for, a lot of. Since like it's a plastic surface, like maybe get one of those paint markers next time. Yeah, I was trying to, stay, I was yeah. thinking about what would be a better way next time. I'm like, because uh, when did this happen? I think, was this this year or last year? No, it was last year because I shaved my head as Krillin. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yep, that's four control or fighting sticks that I own uh, to add on to the show. Glad that was part of the show. I, the show's not over. I just want to nah, talk I'm about gonna, this, yeah, this fight, section of the Fight sticks are sexy. I like, that's why I like. PC gaming content, fighting game content, because you do see people make stuff their own. Yes. Like, checking out cool PC builds. Yeah, rigs and all that. And then just seeing what people do with their sticks and feeling them. Yes. Just like, oh, yeah, you, uh, yeah. You you get it. Yeah. Like, oh, this is how this person is literally feeling this fighting game. Just like, oh, they're a little more resistance in their stick and their buttons, uh, Loud buttons, which, uh, with the the noise of the buttons, I I don't like loud buttons. Okay, I don't but, like loud PC buttons. Yeah, that plays oh. into some of the psychology, the meta game of fighting games. Yes, it does. Where you can, like the classic Evo moment. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Thirty four. Thirty seven. Uh, Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Yeah. Where, it, the the Daigo parry while, uh, Justin Wong is using. Chun Li's super, you hear him button mashing, mm-hmm. and the button mashing is to just make noise. Oh, to get his focus to, off. Yeah, to distract Daigo. And did not work. No, it <laughs> did not work. But that, that's something so cool. Like other uh, competitive scenes seem so uptight and vanilla, but you yeah. have. Be- <laughs> But you have that, again, like, combat sports, like, you have that smack talk, getting in your enemy's face, like, I also, being, like, the way they have a lot of tournaments situated of the enemies mm-hmm. next to each other, that physical proximity where you can shit talk and get in your opponent's head, I love that about I love that games. too, but I really hope they don't get rid of that by doing the... Oh, the setup opposite with, side yeah, yeah i i don't like that the fighting games are competitive fighting games are moving towards not having opponents next to each other yeah, like but one person on that monitor. side one person on that yeah. side each having their own monitor and it's but they can easily fix that though just put the monitor side by side I if know, you want that but but i guess so, them doing that is well we have all these young snowflakes coming in god who are like against smack talk against that's so lame ag- like I don't know. That's but that's the thing about the FGC though. That's why I love the FGC because of the diversity. Yeah. And I'm gonna just keep it real. Since there's so many black people in it, it's gonna be a lot of trash talk. Yeah. Because that's just how. And I always brought this up with sports growing up, and a lot of white friends that I went to college with, and I love talking to US. Uh, we would always talk about how what he felt about celebrations and what I felt about celebrations. And this is when celebrations were illegal in the NFL. Uh. Wes isn't like racist or anything, but um, this is he was a guy that was like, I love Barry Sanders. He just gave the ball and he was done. He didn't celebrate. Okay, okay Colin Cowherd. Right, exactly. And then I that was. black man looks too happy. <laughs> have that right, that's how it was. <laughs> that's, that's why I specifically said Wes isn't racist. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get where he's coming from because there's a difference between like how black. Uh, 
<laughs> sports are little league sports compared to white little league sports <laughs> even though they're teaching the same rules and all that it's a reason why basketball is how exciting and fun compared yeah. to why baseball is having the issue of keeping the sport of fun for the youth yeah because there's a majority white in baseball majority black or yeah. majority black in basketball uh, and, and one mixtape is way more fun than a you league know. one having a bunch of forcing a bunch of kids to wear belts in their uniform where that is a legit mlb rule belts are required yes why why (laughs) yeah why don't you have the pants with elastic yet like come on no it's well because they wore belts a hundred years ago they also didn't let black people play so you really want to go that elastic (laughs) yeah so you know some good ideas some yeah. bad. We'll let you decide. Some bad. Right, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I, the belts is the one I like. <laughs> but the reason I brought up that, because I know how white people can get when you bring up race. Yeah. But the reason yeah. I brought that up is because that's a real factor in the FGC. That's why the FGC, yeah, out of all the game communities, that why that's why that one's like one of the most lit. That and like the sports ones. Because that's where the black professionals are usually in also the way it started in the arcades where all you needed was a couple quarters to go in because a lot of the fgc started with like not just minority neighborhoods and whatnot like but specifically lower income neighborhoods correct and whatnot, yeah. mm-hmm. where you get that attitude you get that smack talk it is fun to watch like yipes man right classic commentator that's the Scoops. first guy i was thinking Scoops. about the whole time when Hagen I said, dogs. right uh, I don't even think he's black. I think he's Puerto Rican. Po- well, yeah, he's, he's black. Probably, so, yeah. Well, yeah. he could be black Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah it's the same thing. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, when when I think of the FGC because of the diversity, like you said, low income, diversity in the backgrounds, a lot of excitement. It's not like how League is. You've probably seen League and how... I don't watch League. Why would I watch League? Get out of here, MOBAs. I don't do MOBAs. <laughs> but if you've seen League for the audience, you know how it is watching most, not all, it's never all of anything, but most of their competitors are usually laid back, quiet to themselves. And, and that's not just the Korean guys, those are also the European guys yeah, and the that's, American that's guys too. That's what I mean, it's just like an uptight Swedish yeah, just, guy. Like... Yeah. And maybe they'll show a little, a little excitement when you win worlds. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a, like a tennis fist pump is the right, most you get. Exactly. Not like FGC where you get like, yeah, wow, right, yeah. bro, it's only the first round. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Just You're really losers. Switch. Yeah, it's your first win of the day. Because it it is also more competitive because it is one on one. It's right. either That's you're better factor, or yeah. the other guy's better. Right. It's not like. Oh, we didn't have this team dynamic, and then like that guy wasn't pulling his weight, right, and then right, right. like you're blaming, so you could blame someone else on your team, like right, no, just bury here. somebody. You're better, or the other guy's better, right? And it's that that's it, and like I was way better. I'm gonna fucking let you know, <laughs> right? But he, oh, he's better. He's better. He's way better. It depends on the game. Every game. <laughs> I'm a little better at Guilty Gear because I have way more experience, but you play more fighting games, so... And that's something that's fun about fighting games, mm-hmm. is that... Like, we were talking about Dive Kick, just fundamentals, and that fundamental knowledge and experience, and I guess some uh, muscle memory, too, with yeah. motion inputs, does mm-hmm. carry over from game. Like, each game might be different, but then those basic concepts of spacing and timing and just mental games mm-hmm. being able to read your opponent and trying to outplay them that translates to all other ones and you can just hop into fighting game. there's like a there's a fighting game for everyone yeah it's a reason why top tier guys in old games can easily go into the next new game mm-hmm. without really knowing the specifics of that new game but since every game fighting game has the same mechanics pretty much yeah that's why they're able to transfer over like it's it's crazy to see how sonic fox was able to what what's up i was gonna read something and i was gonna ask if it made sense okay wait hold on it's a reason why sonic fox was able to uh go from mortal kombat to Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah. Like, even though those games are nothing alike in the surface yeah. level, but the core mechanics fighting games have that same 
heart. He even played it. a little Infinite, maybe, or Street Fighter Five, and was pretty good at that for like that brief time. Before yeah, he then. played. Uh, he played a uh, five for as a point because. Uh, oh yeah, Lupe just, Fiasco was like a hey, Street Fighter. Street yeah, Fighter that, guys that, are like, so much better than yeah. OK guys, and I f- I have that same feeling too. That same bias because I'm a Street Fighter guy. I have that same bias also. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, like Street Fighter guys feel that way. We know that's not necessarily true. Yeah, and we also know, but Sonic also Fox. Fon- Sonic Fox is an exception. Right, though. he's like the goat of fighting yeah. games. So you, he, he, of course, he can be like, "Well, I can play this too." And that, well, of course, you can, but the rest of MK players can't. We know they can't. That's why I appreciate because it doesn't happen often. Because usually your pros focus on one game and play that one game. But that's why I love multi-game guys like Kazunoko or Sonic Fox because mm-hmm. it ta- it's to focus your game your, your time and mental capacity on two different games while being on a competitive level at both of them is it's impressive. Yes, it's, it's impressive. It's like uh Barry who who's the guy who played baseball and football? <laughs> Barry Sanders? Barry Bo- Barry Bonds. No. So I, I just want like see you keep guessing. I, I and it was two of them. It was two uh, guys. Uh, ba- uh, Michael Jordan when he played golf and no, 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 <laughs> no. Barry's right though, right? Is no. the first name right? His name started with a B. Yes. Ah shit! What was his name? Uh, was was he on the Sox? Yes, at a point he was on the Sox. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the big hurt? No, Frank Thomas only played Damn one it. sport. But they, they but they went the to the same, same school. They okay, played at the, the same, same college school. at the same time, though. Yes, they were oh, okay. They were there at the same yeah. time with Charles Barkley. That's like one of the fun part. So, but just tell me, it was Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. Yeah. And then the That's second the guy. guy was uh, Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. Prime time. So I was right on the Sanders part. And you're right on the Jackson part. A B Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you kind of match, mix yeah. and match. Okay. But I, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. You're, you're in the ballpark. They all look alike to me. <laughs> athletes. <laughs> all athletes. athletes. <laughs> exactly. All athletes look like Sean White, uh, <laughs> Deion Sanders. They all look alike to Tony me. Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk. Michael Jordan, LeBron exactly. James. LeBron James. Yeah. You know. They all look alike. Just handsome. Handsome. Just handsome men. All athletes handsome men who can have look all alike. the ladies. Exactly. Or all the dudes. All the dudes. We don't judge. I'd let Deion Sanders judge. kiss me. <laughs> you judge the right way. Exactly. He was on Dancing with the Stars, so I'd dance with him. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Do you know what place he came in? I don't know. Probably he did well, man. Football yeah. players. Oh, I have... think he was in the final, the finals. Yeah. Right? If you're playing the sport, you gotta have good footwork, man. Yeah. Jerry Rice killed it. Did he? Oh. Did he? Great, man. I don't. I'm assuming. Yeah. I didn't watch it. I just kept up with the place they came in. I don't watch that crap. Yeah, like like all athletes, uh, they look alike to me, and they're all good with uh, rhythm and beats and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have no over there like what <laughs> you missed he said sean white and yeah. kevin love and oh, I missed all the trevor lawrence yeah. oh, white people. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well know. who thinks about white people all i heard was athletes and i just made a general assumption um you're well, that's the problem your part. Yeah. you're the all problem that relates to the paragraph i want to read you oh, oh okay. okay about implicit biases oh here we go class <laughs> Let's see what Noah has for us. Okay, I won't take long because I know you guys are doing this. You're you're also part of this currently. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So get on, get on. No way. <laughs> oh my God. No way, Jose. Redacted. <laughs> Let's see. If, does the old man remember where oh, we're no. at last? Oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> Talking about different inputs. We were talking about because it was a it was a good segue because we were talking about uh, celebrations. Oh yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, yeah, Noah yeah, was yeah, able to yeah. segue into our stuff. But uh, that was My good because people just don't like happy minorities. <laughs> it's fact. <laughs> okay. So they should all uh, be as uh, you know 
Bill, like Russell Wilson. He's one of the good ones. <laughs> He's one. You know they. You how many times you think that's said every Sunday? Oh, every Sunday. <laughs> every Sunday. I'm pretty sure over 100 million times. He's a good. Uh, Polite, well spoken. No, he's a he's well spoken, church going man. How many times do you think he has been told to his face? You're very well spoken. You're ve- uh, he gets articulate sometimes. Oh, oh yeah. Wow, <laughs> you're very articulate. Oh my god. Oh, we're also Wilson. He said all the time. Dude, all the time. Dude, when he made that, vi- I'm not sure if you ever seen that video he made with Sierra, his wife. Oh, Sierra is very. Dude, this was when he signed that huge contract. It was $37 million a year. And he was in bed. He was speaking. I got to show you the video. It's perfect. If you don't know what I'm talking about. You're gonna, Sussel Wilson. You're going like. to you're gonna enjoy this video. It was like, you're saying, them same people who said those things about Russell Wilson would literally die here. They would die right now if they saw how he was speaking in this video. Russell Wilson. He's a good man, raising a, another man's kid. <laughs> right. He didn't leave his kids? Yeah. Not at all. That other one, he's, uh, you know, one of those bad ones. <laughs> he's one of those. Yeah. I wish you were kidding. I'm so mad. Yeah, dude, dude, I dude. wish you were kidding. I'm so mad. <laughs> Why? Why are you so accurate? Why? That's, because I live that's in the America. part that bothers me. I live in America and I pay attention to the media. That hurts so much. You're too accurate for me. <laughs> Dang it. Let's see, Russell Wilson guaranteed money. See, uh, video, I think. With Sierra. Oh my god, we're getting close. You know, I don't see why... Uh, these players can't just uh, be quiet and play the game. <laughs> just shut up and dribble. <laughs> of course, a white person's talking about him. Hopefully, the raw videos in here. Oh, 35 million a year. Excuse me. What is he wearing? Something gay. <laughs> So excited Seattle is home. God is so good. The hardest working man I know. You inspire me so much. Hashtag go Hawks. Yeah, go Hawks is right. And the two posts go Black this Hawks. video in bed last night. I know, I think it's something. Oh, here we go. Hey, Seattle. We got a deal. <laughs> go Hawks. Go Hawks. So I'm going to see y'all in the morning. Night. Time for y'all go to bed. Night. You can go to sleep. <laughs> See y'all in the morning. I don't like that. <laughs> exactly. That's how many white Americans were like, what that, did you do? That's, <laughs> and that's how he really sounds. I don't want to see a man shirtless in his bed with his wife. Unless it's a pornograph I'm watching. <laughs> Not like some Twitter thing where it's... Bro, he just made 140 mil. And I was like... What up, cuz? I just made four, more than 40. <laughs> he just got 65 million that day. Yeah. That was his sign-in bonus. You'd be like that, too. Somebody gave you 65 yeah. million. It's like, all right, I, don't, uh, I, got, I just got a huge payday. I don't have to code switch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's what happens when they give you yeah. 35 million a year and they give you the team. I mean, dude's in the Pacific Northwest. He's got a, you know... Well, hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> exactly. Mr. White Man. <laughs> you don't have to do that no more. He like, <laughs> He's like, I, I got paid. I, Microsoft. What up, cuz? What up, y'all? Yeah, y'all he just becomes me. like, it starts talking like Cat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> now, I told y'all, I ain't playing with y'all no more. <laughs> this is my real voice. This is my real voice. I'm Russell Wilson. I throw all the touchdowns, baby. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going gonna, to I'm get you those yards. Just stay out of my business. <laughs> I'm going to do me. Y'all going to do y'all. And y'all stay out of my way. Y'all mind y'all business. <laughs> I'm going to win MVP this year. Yeah. I'm a pimp named Slickback. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. 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 So. Fighting games. Fighting you games. You know, this is fighting games. The fighting games, 
They keep it real, man. Like us. You got Yipes keeping it 100. Majin Obama keeping it 100. Yes. Uh, who, who, who other? Tasty Steve. Ma- Tasty Steve. Keeping it 1,000. Yeah. That's 10 of hundreds. Uh, James Chen. Keeping, keeping it 90. No. <laughs> <laughs> keeping it 100. Keeping it 90 to 100. <laughs> Him crying after Tokido, man. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Fighting games are beautiful, they man. They are beautiful. Speaking. That got me, too. Just seeing how emotional James Chen got. Got me emotional. Dude, it was a chain reaction of uh, emotional madness. That's the I great thing that. about fighting games. You were also talking about how they're easier to see. Uh, compared to, to the yeah. other genres. But that's another reason why ESPN uh, records and shows Evo before Evo start touching people. Yeah. But before uh, they start yeah. touching people, yeah. uh, Evo... That's a shame. Yeah, it's real bad. Hopefully they clean up next Where's year. he gone? Hopefully the cannons take over. Yeah. And nothing comes out bad about the cannons. Exactly. Bros. Hopefully. Hopefully. We can only yeah. hope... That 2021 Vegas and ESPN will be back together again. I was going to sign up for this year's Evo, the online Evo. So I was ready. Yeah. I had a documentary ready or a mockumentary. I was prepared. Mm. But, um, but, um, yeah. Uh, it's a reason why that game or that genre yeah. can be shown on ESPN and not be a laughing stock. And it's. It would you, be competent for the average Joe that you watches can ESPN. Tell what's going because uh, a podcast I listen to, I think, um, a, the the moderator was talking about how his dad just watched the final night of Evo for like the first time, like mm-hmm. a couple years ago, and he's like, "Oh, I get it. It's like some." 50 year old white man in upstate New York, just like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, I get it. What's going on? Like that punch is connecting, and then like." It's easy to read. There's spacing right. and timing. Exactly. And head games. Right. It's, it's like it's, it's any combat sport when you exactly, watch it. Exactly, man. It, it's a beautiful art. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm, my leg kicks are going in and that guy's not doing anything about it. I'm just going to keep going leg keep, kicks. Yeah, until he finds until a way he to Until he adapts it. to do something about the leg kicks and goes about it. or And then once he adapts to those leg kicks... You could have changed your game plan. Like, I'm going to fake the leg kick, so he's going to do something that he that I've trained him to do. Right. And then now I could counter him just by teasing the leg kick and then right. understanding what he's going to do to respond to that leg kick. Then I will pop. And you'll never the adaptation, man. At that, that point, exactly, man. I love it. <laughs> you if you read somebody opponent, that bad, woo, yeah, you got them. You got them reading. You are mind controlling them at exactly. that point. Exactly. Love yeah. it. Love it. So. Man. Favorite fighting game? Uh, definitely Guilty Gear series. Okay. Pro maybe Guilty Gear X two since that's the most time I've put into it. How good would game. you say you were at playing that? Oh, probably not great. I played a ton because it was mainly just me and my friends. Playing. Oh, okay. Like so, none of us other. Even weren't even didn't even know about the high level oh. techniques. Y'all didn't accidentally get like real good. Nah. I mean, against each other, we got really good. Okay. Uh, like, me and my buddy, Jason, we... Jason! We got, like... We played it the most, so we got way better than the rest of our friends. And then oh, okay. He was always just slightly better than me. Uh, but like, Well, that's good. It was only slightly. So yeah, because it, push, it pushes yourself to yeah. get better. But... It's not too far up where yeah. it's like, I'm not going to catch him. Yeah. It's like the perfect length away. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's... Yeah, and then probably Guilty Gear Xrd series. Just because um, something the Guilty Gear series always has is just how unique each character feels. Mm-hmm. Like each character feels like you're playing a completely different fighting game. Mm-hmm. Some characters have completely unique mechanics. And they really step that up in Guilty Gear Xrd, where they have some really cool concepts for characters, really unique ones. Like, I never. Like, I. No, I didn't get as good with any character in Xurd as mm-hmm. I did with any character in X2 just because with how unique they are, but it's way more interesting to play, I feel. Okay. Uh, how about yourself? I would say for myself, um, well, before I go in, the, the reason I asked about the 
how well you guys made each other was because that happened to me and my friends when we were playing Project M. Mm-hmm. You know of Project M. Yeah, of course. Okay. For those who don't know in internet world, Project M was a, a very great mod that was for Smash Brothers Brawl on the Wii. And it pretty much made Brawl a competent fighting game. Exactly. See, that's the thing. <laughs> Took you out need the four slip and with all that. Smash. You need these mods like uh, Brawl Plus, yeah. Brawl. You don't Minus. need that for Smash Five, though. Smash Not for 5. Smash Five. About but time, but you you need yeah. fan made patches to make them into actual fighting games. Yeah, I'll give you that. For the, Where especially back then. the competitive aspects and mechanics of melee were completely like, accidental. Yes, and you're. We, that's not get the fuck out of here with that. well i'm not i'm not in the melee camp so yeah. you can say what you want about melee i felt melee should have died ages ago and i was so happy when eunice kicked out yeah <laughs> melee out of a uh, top eight and i bought eunice because of it people playing melee still as a competitive fighter is like playing the original or playing vanilla street fighter 2 as a competitive fighter some people it do that wasn't built for that yeah and it's, and it shows. It shows. Yeah, or like playing original MK. As yeah. A professional or a pro fighter. It's the most balanced fighting game because everybody pretty much has the same moves. <laughs> exactly. Except exactly. for like one or two specials that each character has. Everyone's. It was all about fatalities back then. Oh, yeah. down down Y yeah. or it was probably was it down two? Down yeah, two. down yeah. two. Um, for See, Universal. I I never understood. MK nomenclature is down to like is two a punch or uh I think because whenever I two hear... is punch I okay. think how they do it uh I think it's the second route where it's left right punch okay. left right kick because whenever it's five buttons whenever I hear two I think of the other nomenclature where it's down the oh button. like yeah for, the keyboard uh, yeah the numpad. Yeah, that's weird when that's like a yeah. picker choosing. It depends on the game. Depends because like, on, yeah. like when Dragon Ball Fighters 2H is down, down, H. Yeah, down heavy. heavy. Down heavy. But it's, like in Tekken. It's always an anti-air. Right. I love, ah, I love it. Yeah, it is nice. But uh, like in um, Tekken Sand 2. Is, 2 is a different. Yeah, 2 is a right punch. That's right punch. Yeah. Or 2 in MK is right punch. Yeah. But yeah, or 2 in Street Fighter is neutral down mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's crazy how that changes depending on the game you would think we would have a universal way of that which wow. would have been the numpad well that's the weird thing too because numpad is universal yeah numpads are universal yeah. people get it because the reason they don't have a universal nomenclature is just because you know right pu- like a guy in pakistan like right punch what does that mean yeah you know exactly yeah that's but fair. if you have two under that nomenclature, like two, right punch, one, two. Right. But with the directional nomenclature, 236, quarter circle yeah, forwards. Quarter circle forward, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but see, that's like, what if you need to combine them both? Like, yeah, like if you're playing Tekken, like, what if you needed to show, like, you want to do Akuma's moves in Tekken? That's, that's like, the, how crazy would that be? That's the thing, because a lot of, you have that, those legacy things of this, the, this being the oldest uh, competitive scene in Mm -hmm. gaming and also just those scenes for the most part being separate Mm -hmm. being in their weird little like i don't know stuff you gotta you gotta it'd be great if you could unify it and it's not gonna happen yeah that's not happening there's there's too many old heads being like too much numpad that's stupid traditionalists never want to change yeah like just say half circle forwards like or qfc yeah qfc q q did i say it right no qcf yeah, quarter QCF, yeah. Or did I say it right the first time? I don't. Quarter forward, quarter circle forward. I can't keep track of a conversation. Don't keep track, yeah, of, every individual, time. Keep no track of individual to. letters, man. <laughs> that's I'm not. That's not happening, man. Like right now, I'm trying to think. What if I wanted to do explain Akuma in Tekken? Like if I wanted to say, oh, to do his Hadouken in Tekken, would you go the quarter circle? Would you go that route, or would you say it how in Tekken? And Tekkenese. I wouldn't use Tekkenese just because I don't like 1-2 as being buttons. Yeah, but you're playing Akuma and Tekken, so... Oh, I'm playing Akuma and Tekken. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, then, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, then you use... But you're still talking about Akuma, though. That's the crazy part. So, 
his stuff translates. That was the cool thing about playing Akuma or, uh, in, in Tekken. Well, it depends on the levels. Because if you say uh, Fireball... Well, yeah, that's Fireball true. 2, Fireball 1. Yeah. Because they're... Yeah, fireballs usually quarter There's circle. A, yeah, forward. standard motions if you want yeah. to launch a fireball quarter circle forwards. Yeah, now that's how I usually talk when explaining moves. Fire, I yeah. yeah, I usually say fireball or dragon punch dragon or punch. tatsu. DP. Yeah, DP. Yeah, it's mo- mostly like sure you can DP dragon punch that input of boop, boop. Right, but yeah. that yeah, that's how we usually go. But um, yeah, to answer your question about favorite game. The reason I brought up Project M is because we played so much. That's not my favorite game, but we played Project M so much. I wouldn't much. respect you if you said a Smash was your favorite <laughs> fighting game. It, was, it is not. I love the series, but it is, it's not my f- favorite. But we played Project M so much, we actually got like top tier like amongst ourselves that when we played other people in Project M, we were shocked how much better we were. That's why I asked, like, how good did you guys get as a group on accident? On accident, no. <laughs> like we, like one of the core mechanics of Guilty Gear is the Roman cancel, mm-hmm. where you could cancel using uh, your meter, your resources. You can cancel any move, and like you can make sick combos. We never utilize that, just because <laughs> I don't know that we never needed to, because we're not fighting at a high level of just yeah with these fundamental. Dude, when we yeah, played, we didn't use Roman cancels. Yeah, that's because I didn't really know what a Roman cancel exactly. was. Exactly, <laughs> like we did it maybe. Like, the last session we played maybe once each. Yeah, because you brought it up. I was like, oh, I'll try it. Because we we don't have that. We're not at that mental level of understanding the game of, like, when's the right time to do this to maximize this combo. I fully don't really uh, don't understand Roman cancels just yet. Yeah, that's that's the thing I like about fighting games. It demands you to pay attention to the game and get good. Just like my ex-wife. Yeah, but people are firmly against the idea of getting good at something, putting effort, having to learn and understand something, which is, I don't know, that's why I like fighting games. That's why I like the Souls games, because it demands your attention, demands you have to understand the game. You can't mm-hmm. just go into it mindless. Right. You kind of can and still have fun. Just Except like, the MK, I feel. I want to hit buttons and see cool stuff happen. That right. You could you do that in a fighting game. I do love how the modern games are starting to do that, where if you do want to just see pretty stuff, they have the auto combos. Yeah. I know people at our level or around our level, they're going to be like, oh, what? Yeah. Or, you know, the <laughs> purist. Here, here's the thing. When I was playing the campaign mode in uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, I couldn't beat the final fight. I'm really? Like, well, I was struggling. And then okay. I realized, like, oh, wait a minute. Boom, boom, boom. I just did the, the auto, auto combo, combo over and over again. I just did the auto combo over and over again. You were trying to do the bread and butter yeah, combo. Yeah, I was trying likely, to... I was trying to... Light, medium, light, medium. I was trying to... Yeah, I was trying yeah. to, like, play it like a legitimate fighting yeah. game over this final boss. I'm like, oh, no. I, oh, wait a minute. All I have to do is get that first hit for that hit confirm and just, like, mash the right. light button. Or mash two if you want the special one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... I think I probably did that too, quite honestly, because yeah. I didn't know. I, I at the I still have a hard time doing the bread and butter combo in fighters, so I know at the beginning of uh, fighters I was definitely doing mostly auto combos or uh, doing them to the middle of it and then starting a new one. I was not doing what the lore tells you to, yeah. but I was doing whatever was comfortable and was giving me help or damage. Yeah. But I mean, that's what you should do in a fighting exactly. game. Exactly. And we're talking about the things we like about fighting games, and that, right. that's why it has probably the smallest competitive scene, because there mm-hmm. is a barrier of entry, but it is worthwhile once you get in there. Right. And, yeah, it's... I was recently watching a TED Talk from Carol S. Dweck, She is a professor who, uh, I I think a professor of education or something. Okay, where? And her, I don't remember. I I might still have the tab open on my phone. Okay. Uh, But her whole thing is, she has a book called Mindset, where it's about, like, how we should be teaching our children how to learn for the sake of learning and improving yourself rather than learning something so for an uh, x speed of reward like 
like a gold pass. sticker or a, a pass uh, or a grade. Like, yeah. no, you should put in the effort to learn this thing because you want to learn it. You want to get better at it. You want to improve hey, yourself. Send me that tip. Rather than, yeah, it, that's it's what I had. Stuff. I had to teach myself that. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Because, yeah. like, before, like, college... I was like that where I'm like, okay, well, I know I'm learning. Yeah, I want to I want to pass this test and then I forget it all later. Exactly. And then on the side, my side hustle was pretty much teaching myself things I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. Like all that stuff I remember, like yeah. like history about the Civil War that I wanted to remember or like like black history. Not I'm not even quoting that, but black history. <laughs> yeah, I'm like just black history. Because no black quotes. history is American history, people. It, exactly. But that I learned that on my own as yeah. well. Yeah. But like after I left college and that that's when I really was like, okay, well, you want to learn still, but now I, it's not like, oh, I got to learn. I'm forced to learn this because if I don't learn it, I'll fail. No, I'm just yeah. learning just to evolve. Just to learn. Yeah. Yeah, just to in improve yourself. Right, right, right. And that's how... And that's my take That's on. how we... That, that's... This is how you build a, build a better society where you encourage curiosity and mm -hmm. not a desire for knowledge instead of having a culture of people who are anti-intellectual for some reason <laughs> and condemn people who have educations. Right, and, exactly. I don't know. It's, it's, it's great. This country's weird, man. It is. <laughs> but weird. to answer your actual question now, my favorite fighting yeah. game, because yeah. uh, it always changes. It, it does change for me. I feel you, because whatever you're playing now and having fun with. Like, yeah. Yeah. It changes for me. Uh it's in the Street Fighter series, I would have to say. And Third then Strike, it, baby. Third, Third Strike, strike. Be, became a favorite for mine for like a year or two. Because yeah. like I said, I found out about it real late. I was actually at a, a beer cave. Oh, and it was at one of yeah. those custom ones, the white art ca cabinets where you can put any game on it. And on it, it was Street Fighter 3. I'm like, Street Fighter 3? Like, That's not Alpha 3. <laughs> let me see it and then i played it and that just the the graphics and all that dude it, like, it's the rubber animation man, is so it's, good, it's so man. beautiful it feels good too yeah. it feels smooth I, it's i was able to still put in the inputs for ken when i played on yeah. so i didn't have to learn too much it was in like a brand new game in that way yeah so it was so nice like guilty gear like i love that game but mm -hmm. Not going to say I'm good at it or even decent. Like, I don't understand the basic. I don't really use the basic mechanic of parrying ever. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll just block it. I know. You did some parrying when we played, though. Yeah. You did a decent amount. But, like, it's not, uh, not something that I'm constantly thinking about, which is what you should be doing since it's a core mechanic of the yeah. game. But I, for people like us where we're, like, we're not, like, in the casual level, but we're not, like like god here yeah. either we're like somewhere like in this spot like we have to remember good ca yeah but you're still above me you're i think you're middle tier i'm like bottom i'm like top bottom tier top bottom. or bottom middle tier and you're like firmly in the middle yeah i, I would say like me i would say for myself middle because i am definitely not at a spot where i'm laughing like 10 hours a day yeah. I, I can't do that maybe if i would have evolved a little sooner like when i was like 15 16 like mm -hmm. if i all the stuff i just taught you if i did or i was uh, i taught myself what i was telling you about if i did all of that maybe like three four years earlier than i did maybe i would be up here yeah but since i started kind of late with the seriousness and then now i'm just I'm not going to say too old, but I have yeah, but too much on my schedule now. Here's the thing I like about dates. fighting games. Every other competitive genre, you have guys retiring at like 28, like yeah. 24. Mm -hmm. Game knowledge, your experience, your your uh, the metagame like, of understanding your opponent, and also like the game knowledge goes way further than reaction time. Right. Because... In this genre, you have way more older dudes than you do every other competitive game where you have, like, a lot of the top guys are in their 30s. Daigo, who is considered the, the first professional gamer, yeah, he's almost 40. He's, I think, yeah, 38, he's, 39. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah, and he, he, he talks about 
I don't know, he's got, he had a really cool statement a while back, like last year or like around right when he turned 39 or 38 mm-hmm. about like having to, like thinking about games differently, but he's still, he's still excellent at him, he's still fighting at like a top level, mm-hmm. even though there are guys like Punk who have way better reaction time, but yeah. the, the, Best, the classic example of that is the Street Fighter Five final of Tokido. Oh versus my god, Punk. I was just thinking that. Yeah, that, that's the classic. Bro, that's match the when you, as like, soon as you brought up age reaction, like none of that stuff matters if yeah. you don't know how to step back and ask for the reset that he should have asked for. Exactly. Instead of rushing into that second round, it's that is my favorite set of any. That made me so mad because I want any competitive to gaming. I want to. I wanted to. Win, to USA, so, but, USA. Yes, USA. But then until like that speech at Tokido at the end, and just watching that experience. Well, yeah, just, Tokido yeah. won't be over, but because Tokido, I think he's early to mid thirties now. Yeah, I think so. And then Punk was the new hotness. He, yeah, he's he like just 19, turned like 20 yeah at the during time. that yeah he was nineteen or twenty, and pr- earlier in that tournament he knocked Tokido yeah, down to losers bracket. Yeah, just, and and. So he, uh, in Punk, he is the future of the Street Fighter scene, yeah. but he lacks that maturity that yeah. Tokido had at that time. Yeah. And also now, with him throwing hissy fits on Twitter. <laughs> well, yeah, you so, shouldn't do that. I, I'm not going to yeah. defend that, but bro, we've all been there we've playing been... online, and some dudes just skipping everywhere. Keep it to yourself. Don't yeah. call out the producers you... of yeah, the game or yeah. like the organizers of the tournament, man. Yeah, I wouldn't call out the producers of the game because the producers of the game have nothing to do with the coding of them yeah. online. And then the... you don't you don't see uh, Russell Wilson calling out the <laughs> uh, uh, what, Roger Goodell. <laughs> No, definitely not Russ. No. But maybe the others. Yeah. But Russ is one of the good ones. <laughs> yeah, <take> it's... Because <laughs> Punk was... He was dominant that whole tournament. Yeah. But, but in the end, it was... <laughs> yeah. But in, in the end, it was the Keto's experience... Oh, yeah, yeah. ...that won him that Evo. He was able to just get in Punk's head, and he was able to just having him been in the scene for over like well over a decade mm-hmm. just keeping his composure on a, in on a big stage like the main event of evo yeah and just also being able to read his opponent better and like get understand the mind games of it of just i'm going to do this taunt combo <laughs> and then this is this young guy it's going to. It's gonna make him salt yeah. God. It's gonna, it's gonna sh- like break his composure a little bit. It will, and it did, and, and it did. He and did it the worked, worst man. thing he possibly could have did was not go for the reset. Yeah, where he could have asked the he judge. Asked, yeah, he could have gone to character select, buy himself some time to cool off. Right, that's what he really needed. Just, uh, give his nerves a little time to calm down. Just give him some some time to breathe. But like, nah, he like. I'm a young hotcha. I'm just gonna go back into right. it. I, I beat this. him earlier in the tournament. Yeah. I can beat him again. I just like need I know. It. I know. I'm quicker on the buttons. Quicker with the stick. I've got this. And then like, no man, he's got you downloaded. Yeah, like, downloaded. Yeah, be like uh, uh, F-O, uh Tration. Yeah. Be like downloaded. <laughs> oh my! Do you? What was that tournament? Was that what? Uh, that was one of the last tournaments of Street Fighter Four, I think, uh, where uh, he infiltration, uh, the South Korean god at Street Fighter. Yeah. Oh, who was early, he playing early, in finals? Uh, early Street Fighter Five. Who was my guy since he played Nash? How uh, could I not? Yeah, oh, but my, that's when uh, I, oh, I I man. forgot who came back in because you know he was canceled for a while. He's back though. I know he's back. Same <laughs> thing for Ken. Ken back too because Ken was gone for a moment too. <laughs> we could actually play Street Fighter Five today and actually play as our characters. Well, no, I was talking about infiltration getting canceled. Oh, for a while. what happened to him? He beat his wife, dude. Yeah, that was that. Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot about like, that. Like, even before... Like, I, this may have happened a little bit beat, before I me, I didn't even too, know they man. did that stuff in South Korea. That's kind of messed up. Oh, no. They... Uh-oh, you got some... You listen know, listen to, to uh, Bobby to Bobby Lee's podcast, man. Oh, that happens a lot. Yeah. Dang, that's messed up. Very patriarchal society. Well, yeah. And okay. uh, specifically, his dad just uh, was an extreme of it. Jesus. But, you know. But they were in America. Yeah. Well, we know. 
Fob, fob parents, man. We know how America works. Fob parents. All, and that's they true, bring the too. old country, yeah. yeah. That's true, too. But also, you gotta get hit a little bit as a kid. <laughs> you don't hit him enough, your kid becomes an entitled asshole who just is a that's shitty That's what society's else. looking like right but now. But you hit your kid too much... They become a psycho. <laughs> right. It, yeah, like... Gotta have that moderation of hitting your kid. F- hit your kid five to ten times in their lifetime. In their lifetime. Not yeah. like... Don't... Not beat them like a, another grown man, you sicko. Yeah, just like hit him with a belt or a switch. Or like your on, hand, depending yeah. on how big you are as a just person. Like, or just... Don't do to Adrian Peterson. Remember Adrian <laughs> Peterson? Where he beat his sons or he had yeah, welts yeah. on his nuts... That's too far. That's extremely That's too, too far. far. I'm like, don't be yeah. like 250 where you can... If you're able to run over 300 pound men... Don't use your full strength. Don't use your full strength to beat your child. A spanking or just like a little bit of the belt. If anything, you need to just flick your finger at their butt. That's it. Yeah, or just flick them in the forehead. Right. That... You don't need to hit your child like how you would hit like a defensive lineman trying to take your head off. Yeah, or just like... Get in their face like you're going to hit them. Put a little fear in them. <laughs> right. Whatever you do, yeah. don't hit them like they owe you money. Also, kids aren't fighting as much as they did back back in our day. Yeah, that's true, too. Because you have these assholes going up online. Oh, God, yeah. And also, like, these soft-handed parents. When we were growing up, we understood if you're being an asshole or a piece of shit, Someone can beat the shit out of you. Yes, Someone will hit you. That was real. Like, and you understand to be polite, cause and to just try to understand somebody, cause somebody could tackle you or throw a punch. You know? Yeah, that's real. That's, you know, and that's so messed up that uh, kids don't have that anymore. I know. Or just, at least, like, I feel like in one which kids yeah. at least. You gotta get at least in one little fight. Your mom gets scared. And then you move with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air, and you understand not to start some shit, because you know, I don't know. There's there's no consequences for assholes just trying to be toxic online, or you know, it, it, back in our day, if you're trying to be toxic to somebody on the playground, you're liable to get hit. Yeah, you. You're, <laughs> you're liable to. Hit get hit by your mom or dad or something yeah. but you know i was thinking about this the yeah, other I day i was thinking about like i think my uh my age group was is like the last one to have that type of uh group of you talk crap in real life you can get punched in the face yeah and then i was also part of the age group where you had that but online chat was a thing where you could, like, social media tech or bully people online. That was, like, the beginning of my generation where we were the mixture of both. But I remember back just... And Tyler Creator, you probably couldn't say this today, but when he first said this years ago, just turn off your screen, okay? Yeah. Don't be addicted to the phone, kid. Get off... If somebody's talking this much crap about you online and is bothering you, get off because... They're not going to stop because it's easy to torment you from afar because there's no consequence. Yeah. But if, especially if you go to the same school, you see him or her, depending on your gender, you see them the next day, you smack them in the face. Okay. Because yeah. that, that's something I didn't deal with was bullies. I wasn't a bully, but I wasn't going to get bullied. And you talk crap to me online, I'm going to hit you right in the nose. And I don't play that. But fortunately, people didn't talk crap to me. I had a story about how I beat up a kid that was like 6'2 when I was uh, in 7th grade. I was 5 feet. It was crazy. Nice. I'm, this was a real story. This is uh, Since it's that puberty time, he probably just like awkward and didn't know. <laughs> like, I used to be the same height as you. I, <laughs> <laughs> right. So flailing his arms. Dude, he poured water on my head. Ugh. And then I turned around, I elbowed him, got him to my height, pushed him down, got him lowered, and then had him like this. And then the teacher stopped me. This was after school. And then the craziest part was I was such a, a great student. I won the Christian Stewardship Award. I went to Catholic school. I won the Christian Stewardship Award every year for, from first grade to eighth grade. Did bust out that uh, Christian jujitsu? Pretty much. And they were going to expel him. 
or suspend him. And then my, my mom saved the kid. Nice. <laughs> because she was like, well, if you suspend them, you got to suspend Michael too. And they were like, well, we don't want to suspend Michael. So they didn't suspend either of us. His mom was very grateful, though, that my mom was, wasn't was like, yeah, suspend the kid. Yeah. My mom's real nice and fair in that way. But yeah, yeah I was need... going to mess him up. Yeah. I kind of did. But yeah, I'm like, you know, being being the short one in the class, you know, people always want to take a shot at you if they when they can but you know you i'm not sure you're not, you're, you're not that tall but you're not no. the shortest so you're probably like like five eight i think yeah so you're probably like the the third like regular, or fourth yeah. shortest usually so if you're like the the third or fourth shortest no one's ever going to talk about you no i'm like regular height how many short people are in your school i mean short people how tall were your people bro I shouldn't say your people. No, I get what you're saying. (laughs) Just like Catholic school and, dude, like, most, like, my uh, my, uh, inner circle from high school, they're they're all, like, 5'10 or above. Okay. And then I'm 5'5 or 5'6 in that area. And then I went to all boys school, so it's not like I saw short women all day. I saw mostly tall guys. They were like five ten. Yeah, I think with my career, I think the tallest guy was like at most six one. Oh like god, five, six. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, we had a bunch of six one guys. A bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Oh man, if I would have went to your school, that would have been real no, crazy. It been fun. Well, I would have been like one of the one black Still, guys. Yeah. So, I guess that's the trade off. Yeah. Either be the around the same height as everybody, and then just be the only black guy, or be like the outlier in height pretty much and then be in a very diverse school because like at my school uh it was a article on it online and they said that my school was um the second most diverse school in the country nice where it was a 30 percent black 30 percent white 30 percent uh latino and uh 10 percent uh asian yeah yeah it was it was it was a real fun experience for for me and it was an all boys school. My sister, she went to the all girls campus, and it was not the same because girls are awful to each other. Mm. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Oh man, I think there was a fight at my high school of girls, and they just ripping hair out, like taking, oh. taking keys and like in between your Jesus. fingers. And what kind of hood rat school you go to? I don't. What one? <laughs> Uh, one of the girls involved, I think, was like cuckoo. Uh, <laughs> Say less. I got yeah. you. I got you, bro. She I was, got she you. She was super hoodish. I, I got you. White. You had to say nothing. Got, I know, you know what you're talking yeah. about. I knew what you meant by those those pants. Okay. Yeah. I got you, fam. This. Mm, yeah. Fun times. I, and you were probably like. <laughs> Did you see it? Did no, you actually I didn't see, see it? it oh, okay. They they locked down the cafeteria. Of course. <laughs> Happening in the hallway, but I like fighting though. Fighting's fun. Fighting is fun. Fighting games and fighting, real life. Because me and my buddy uh, Phil would do living room boxing, which we haven't done in a while. Like now slap older. boxing or no, no, full on. Oh, like gloves. gloves? We had judges. Ref. Oh, that's cool. No face shots though. Oh, okay. just because you know. Oh, I would have been going for your dome all no, the time. No, no, we're. We're adults. Oh, yeah. We can't be afford to get punched in the you. face. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds fun. You don't want to go to the office with, like, a black eye. Who hit like, you? A concussion. Yeah. I, I fell into a doorknob. <laughs> right. But, yeah, it, it's it's exciting. It's fun. It, there's nothing like it, really. Like, yeah, boxing or fighting take, general. So yeah, fun. I want to take kickboxing. Dude, I wanted to do Bra- Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Don't you, uh, I, I don't like I don't like grappling, man. Bro. You hear jujitsu is cool. Like, uh, yeah, my friend's cousin has a jujitsu school, I think. Okay. Is that, do you know who Ryan Hall is? Uh, sounds familiar. Let me see. Yeah, he, uh, Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall. Yeah, he's done some MMA that focuses mainly on grappling, where, uh, I think his last UFC fight, he tapped out BJ Penn. He, oh, actually. Yeah, supposedly, uh, I think... <laughs> yeah, it's like the picture. Yeah, I think my friend's pictures. cousin went to the same, like, dojo as Ryan Hall for a while. Oh, so that's then cool. they trained for a little bit together. Oh, yeah, that's actually just, real dope. That's what's up. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah, I'm not... I went to school with uh, I like throwing, Curtis Blades. I like throwing hands and, and feet, man. Oh, dude. Did you fight in high school, like like martial arts? Uh, I did some when I was a kid. School? Some uh, Shotokan. Shotokan. Japanese? Yeah. Okay. Some uh, karate. But, you know, you, you most, mostly do katas, which is boring as hell. What's katas? Ka- katas are... Uh, you didn't do those in Taekwondo? Wait, is it? Where you're doing the forms and the... Uh, Bro. Like, it's so boring. That's like what I a- That's why I asked. Because I'm yeah. like, is it? But the, My favorite times are the times you did spar. Right. It was a punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Like, great. Dude, you memorize those things. Is... Get a belt. Like, no, I want to... Yeah, I wanted to fight. Ugh, sparring was so much fun. I, like, did a straight kick on a dude and knocked him on his ass. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So you you did it like you were like busting open the door. Exactly. Oh, that's dope. Well, it, it, we were the same age. Same age. Uh, no, nah, he was like a little older than me. Oh, nice. Like by a year. But again, we're that in grade matters school. matters kids. Yeah. yeah. He was still smaller than me. <laughs> he was like a belt higher. And also like a little Because he was just older, in a year. Then, yeah, longer. he was just... Like I grew a little faster than him, so I was bigger than him. Just like kicked him over. That's funny. Knocked him on his ass. That's funny. Oh, good. And then also... um. One time in the band hallway, uh, me and my buddy had like a little friendly sparring match uh, with uh, our other friend, my friend Jason, uh, presiding over it. And it ended with, in a DQ because, again, we were doing a thing with uh, no face shots and right. they hit me in the mouth. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, my, my lip Your was, mouth bleeding. was bleeding. Yeah. I already know. Just like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Well. Yeah, I won, you cheaters. Yeah. But it was pretty cool. He had like a necklace on, and I got him on the chest, like on the necklace. Ooh, and it left so probably left yeah. a mark. Yeah. yeah it's oh, fun, that man. sounds fun. But fighting games are a safer way to do it. Yes. Even though you could wear like the the gear yeah. for fighting. You could wear, yeah, yeah you but could. you're not carrying that stuff with you. Exactly. Sometimes you just want to start a fight. Also, if you lived in Seattle, you could do that legally. Did you know that? Just uh, wear headgear and... No, you like in uh, Seattle, you can start legal fights with people and not get in trouble for it. Like, uh, you know how people want to fight after they leave the bar? Yeah, like legal street fights are legal in Seattle. Where, like, the cops won't, like, arrest you or anything. If you and the guy (sighs) consent to it, it's it's all good. (laughs) You don't need a commission? Nope. It's just uh, yeah, damn, like a, I challenge you to a fight, and the other guy's like, "Yeah, cool." I think as long as you don't kill the guy. <laughs> yeah, you can't kill him. <laughs> yeah, when he falls, you have to like stop. <laughs> yeah, you could. I mean, like I, hockey you, rules. You could still get a civil suit, though. I imagine if you no, like, like that's. I think that's the thing for yeah, that's the Seattle like, thing. Like if yeah. you if you say like, "Yeah, I'm I'm gonna participate in but this fight." But what if you paralyze the guy and like I can't do my job anymore because I'm paralyzed? Then why the heck would you even ask to? consent to that fight then know, i'm like if you see bro if lebron james wanted to fight you in seattle which it be like yeah let's do this and you know it's consensual uh, yeah i want to be on world star i'll agree <laughs> to that. that's right exactly Wait, that's the only reason that would make sense there's no way i'm winning but no i'm gonna get some twitter followers out of this or at least blow up a little I got bit. beat up by lebron like, yeah. <laughs> check me, check me out i got beat up by lebron bah! Bah! Dude, you're not getting no reach on LeBron. Yeah. Dude, that that dude is the GOAT for a reason. Oh, yeah, dude. He's a freak of nature. Dude, I love him. He's great. Oh, man. But, um, yeah. I, li- I like, uh... So, Street Fighter V is my favorite. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I would have to say uh, right now, Street Fighter V. I was about to say, I like, uh... Walton's theory that uh, LeBron was grown in a vat of Powerade. <laughs> well, the, like... Oh for, my god! You remember that? Because at that point in time, mm. he had he was that good, and that he had a career that long without any serious injuries. Yeah, Were, has he had any serious injuries yet? Or uh, he's had some. injury last okay. year. Yeah, yeah. But it, finally, it was, it was age, only a month. It's his age catching up with him. But also, again, and, and then not again, a serious injury, right? No, because this year he didn't get hurt at all. Yeah, dude's a, dude's a freak of nature. Yeah. That dude's dope. He, that's what happens when you put $2 million into your body every year. <laughs> I'm like, true. that's... If you treat your body... Who knew? You treat yeah. your body well, your body will respond correctly. Duh. Yeah. I mean, if you have a ton of money to pay for the best doctors, best physical therapists, best trainers... Best nutritionists. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, when he first started, I think it was a million. So... 
Yeah. Hey, that's smart though because think about it. He if he put let's just say two million for since he's been in the league, so that's two million two million times seventeen. So that's thirty four million. Mm-hmm. If he didn't treat his body so well, yeah, he would have thirty four million extra dollars, but he'd probably be out the league. Yeah, let's just say he uh, everything was the same about his career, but the nutrition. Uh, so he would have probably had to retire this year or two, three years, and he probably wouldn't have made max money those the last two, three years of his career, but he has made max money these years. So he he has already made that money back technically. That thirty four million dollars he would have had, yeah, but he wouldn't have not had his this last max max contract, which is a. I think forty million a year. So <laughs> the one year he he played in L.A. already made that money back <laughs> from his nutrition, and then this year where he wins the title, that's extra money. So yeah, that's a, he's a smart man. That's a reason why uh, he has a school. Yeah. They don't give idiots schools. Like, have you ever heard of Trump Elementary? Yeah, exactly. Also, hey, he beat COVID. Silver plays tonight or fights tonight. Oh, we. How much are pay per views? I'll go half season. Let's see. I'm like, if it's season, like I 80 can... bucks, I'll like, nah. I can probably get it for free. <laughs> Dude, that. So... Oh, my God. Dude, Greg Hardy still fights? I don't know. Again, I just got into it like last year or two. Oh, we're going to have fun. Greg Hardy, his story is crazy. So he used to be an NFL player. He used to play for Carolina Panthers. Then he, this was uh, before the Me Too movement, but after Ray Rice, you know, both Ray Rice who beat up his wife in an elevator. elevator. Yeah. This was after that. Oh. Uh, he beat his, he beat up his white girlfriend. You can't do that. Oh, no, no, no. You can't be a white man or a no. black man beating a white woman. And the whites won't stand for it. Yeah, whites won't stand for it. And, uh, they don't even like it when you whistle at them. Exactly. So you beat them? Nah. Nah. And then uh, in that same room where they found her like beaten, uh, he had a bunch of guns on the bed. And it was it was oh, a bad boy. look. So Carolina cut him, but the Cowboys picked him up because it's the Cowboys. Uh, he had an okay year, but then more stuff came out, and then the Cowboys didn't re-sign him. So nobody wanted him in the NFL. But the UFC took him. He'll put them hands to Yeah, he was like, hey, if I can beat my girlfriend, I can beat these guys. <laughs> and then uh, he does now, and he's pretty decent at it, I think. You know what was disappointing? What? Anasanya versus Costa, man. UFC put together an amazing promo video. Mm-hmm. I thought that fight was going to be more even. <laughs> <laughs> they they made Costa seem like he was going to be a tougher opponent no. than he was. No. I was like, oh, uh, like midway through the second round? No, okay. No. <laughs> right. You're talking about Israel Adesanya. Adesanya, man. That dude, dude, I love a, that, man. That dude is a freak of nature. He does. He's got them jutsus down. Dude, I love that, man. <laughs> I, dude, and the part and I His love, dance game is great. Yeah. He's got a good crew. The reason me and him are like homies, I already know we are, because he's a Rock Lee guy too. When I mean, you love Rock Lee, y- you already know your boys, because only the select few love Rock Lee like we do. Like, see, you are, I can already no. tell you hate Rock Lee. Don't know why you hate Rock. Uh, Rock Lee is the man. I'm not going to love him until he opens the the eighth chapter. It's like you want him to kill himself. How nice. Yeah, dude. Well, you know, you're sick of my you guy didn't to... die. He doesn't have to die. But again, you know, you kind of get like God powers in the mix to keep him from dying. Yeah, yeah, that, that's called a uh, and his asterisk. foot is still like gone. All these things are why you don't asterisk, go asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. right. Like, come on, hey, God's I'm... helping you out, and you still got a permanent damage. Hey. Unless you put everything on the line for the future, for the king, and pass that will of fire, man, you get, he, ain't get, he ain't shit to me. Asuma. You ignorant. He's number one. <laughs> you uh, the uh, Shika Ina Cho Trio's parents, they're number one. Until you die, you ain't got 
Respect for me. Neji. Neji, dude. He's he understands, man. You gotta protect the king. The future of the village. Well, Neji's dead, so. Oh yeah. Well, he's a hero. Yeah, but Rock Lee's a Rock Lee's a loser. He's some dorky ass kid. Who would let that dork into him? <laughs> who would let that dork into him? Yeah, who would let that dork into him? You got any more uh Tin Tin. Uh, is that who I don't know. I, I feel like that that was Come on, somebody should be uh, sleeping with Rock Lee. <laughs> we, we are getting out there. Do you got any more things to say about the fighting game? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, okay. We talked we're about gonna our think, favorites. We're going to think about stuff like after the fact. <laughs> it's know, always disappointing. Of it's okay. Oh, yeah, because well, we can do a second podcast of this. You want to come over when my fight, my cabinet comes over? You got a cabinet? Yeah, for Marvel vs. Capcom. The Infinite? one in Barcade? No, the original. Oh, it's not... It's a one up arcade, bro. It's not Marvel vs. Get a Marvel vs. Capcom. Wait, also, arcade. the worst Marvel vs. Capcom you're so That's some, I, my favorite one to play. The roster 100% is trash. Is trash. Oh, it's a fun game mechanically. I'll give you that. Yeah, I, it's a fun game mechanically. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I've been I don't like it. I don't like 3v3, man. Too much. Too Marvel vs. Capcom 1 is 2v2. Okay, I'll dig it. Okay. Right. I'm like, bro. It's got Cyclops, right? Uh, as an assist, I think. But I think uh, Marvel versus not Marvel, uh, Street Fighter versus X Men is on there too. Here's what we need: Tatsunoko versus Capcom port. That's my favorite on of the Switch? Versus series. Yeah, and so you don't need to do it on. Well, the thing is, Everything it's a licensing nightmare. So well, yeah. <laughs> it's a That's... miracle it came out to the U.S. in the first place. Yeah. Speaking of licensing nightmares, Capcom versus SNK, I bought that. You want to play that after a podcast? Two? or Two, of course, yeah. Capcom versus SNK or SNK versus Capcom? The GOAT one. The Millennium 2001 one. I like SNK versus Capcom 2 more. It's got Zero in it. Zero is a playable character. You're so gross. You can play as the Martian from Metal Slug, dude. You are so disgusting. Dude, the one I have, the one Capcom made is the best one. Like, what's wrong with you? Do you want to talk about the future of fighting games? Sure. Upcoming games? Actually, yeah. I'm excited I for the you... next season of Street Fighter V. Let's I'm actually excited first. for that, too. Yeah. I was going to say, I bet you're really excited for Strive. For Guilty Gear Strive. I'm excited for Akira coming to... Because uh... I've, I've been out of... I was... Last time I really played Street Fighter V was Season 1. Oh, we're going to have some real fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, jury... I bought with some fight money, and that was it. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited because. Wait, you could yeah, actually buy characters with fight money. Yeah, cross crossover characters are a cool way to get people into fighting games. Yes, that's a true strategy. Which, it, which is what the Nether Realm Studios does all the time. Rambo. Ooh, I'm a burping. Burp, 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 burp. Sentence, but. I don't want that to happen to Guilty Gear. Oh, where there's too many uh so I don't want guest characters, characters man. It, it Guilty Gear has a very specific vibe and universe. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Which with. they kind of they're kind of killing with the casualization of Guilty Gear. Yeah. But they shouldn't add yeah, celebrity they, characters. The whole thing is strife. it has such a unique flair to it compared to every other game where Yeah. Like if you get Ryu in there, it's that's gonna, gonna look, he's gonna look weird. And he's boring. gonna look dope, but it's also gonna yeah. look weird. Also, just his basic play style where it's oh, he's so simple. Yeah. It's not gonna match. The simplicity of it. But uh, yeah, when I get the cabinet, that should be uh, the sixteenth, I think. Yeah. You want hey, you want to come through? Yeah. All right, bet you want to help build it. Yeah. Okay, cool. You want to help build it too? No. I don't work well with others. All right, so after this cut, <laughs> where did you get the hot dog from? <laughs> Who knows? Magically appeared, but this is just an abrupt end to the episode. So we're gonna go play some fight games. Maybe watch Anderson Silva. His last fight. Mm-hmm. But you should go out there again, some fights in real life, but mostly again fights in fighting games. Yes, and make sure they're consensual fights. Yeah, go to Seattle, apparently. Yes. But yeah. 
So, um, let's pl- plug yourself, man. Okay. Twitter, My anything. pleasure. Uh, well, in the fighting game world, you can find me. Uh, you 2 meg 2108 That's T-U-M-E-G-2108. Uh, that is, like, Xbox and all that. Uh, Discord, that's that. Um, I think that's still Snapchat. That used to be, like, a bunch of my handles, but, like, um... I kind of changed it around for work purposes now. Uh, IG is Midwestern Mike. Uh, Twitter is, uh, I think you just type in Mike the Renaissance Man. You can just type that in. Or Mike the Media Renaissance Man. And the actual at is um, at uh, Midwest Mike or Midwestern Mike. Or, oh, Micro Mike Media. That's what it is okay. on Twitter. I'll throw it up on the lower third. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll see it. But, uh, yeah, dude, I'm uh, a fan of the show. I, I watch Nerdington Post every time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yes, watch uh, the weekly Nerd News podcast, the Nerdington Post, on this channel. Yeah, I see. I'm a fan. And also, uh, hey, man. We like wrestling. Yes. Sometimes we don't have time for it, so we go to No Time for Wrestling dot com yes. to get the latest recaps just to stay caught up man yes n4t dub that's the yes. shorthand of it on you can find us on twitter but uh yes like paulo said yeah we're both contributors to the site and yes. we also love the idea of the site of just you know there's just so much wrestling there's so much promotion yeah promotions going on so you know it's great to have a central location where we can just get caught up yes and uh, we'll probably end up making videos for it our, ourselves at a point yes. more con- contributing in that way. And then, uh, yeah, that's all for us. I think the next time we'll be doing this is our Marvel versus Capcom day when yeah. the cabinet finally yes. comes out. So that should be, and sometime, you know how online works, don't want to yeah. give a specific time. So, but like in some time. This year, in Redacted. <laughs> yes. 2020 has been an interesting time. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you've been playing fighting game-wise, uh, what fighting games you like, and throw us a sub, man. Yes. Throw us a sub, and I'm going to throw this hot dog in my mouth. <laughs> that was pretty sus. Uh, Among Us, sus. Yes. See ya.